What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingView.com and in this video, we're going to add our blog post model for our app with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add the ability to add blog posts to our app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingView.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, moving right along in our Flask app here. In this video, we want to add the ability to add a blog post. So we're going to have to do all kinds of stuff in this video. We're going to have to create this form for one thing, but we're also going to have to create a new model that deals with just blog posts. So we'll start to do that in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask Friday videos. Flask Friday, the best day of the week. So check that out if you haven't so far. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna open up my hello.py file. And this file is getting very large. We're gonna have to deal with the size of this thing pretty soon, but not quite yet. In this video, like I said, we're just gonna start to add the uh, database stuff for blog posts. So the whole point of this app is it's eventually supposed to be a blog. So we need to start building out the blog sort of uh, features for this. So the first thing we want to do is create a blog post model. And this will keep track in the database of all of our blog posts. And we'll start out very simple and we'll make this more complicated as we go on. In this video, we're just going to rough this out and get a basic sort of template of what we want. Like I said, we can add more stuff later on, foreign keys for users and all kinds of stuff like that. In this video, we're just going to get the, the basic content for each blog post. So let's create a class and let's call this posts or whatever. And let's go, this inherits db.model. And inside of here, we just need to define what we want to save in this model. So first we want an ID. Every blog post needs a unique ID. We need that in case we want to delete a blog post in the future. We need to know which ID to delete. And also we're going to assign blog posts to users and you know, there'll be some foreign key stuff. So we need IDs. You almost always need an ID for things. So let's go db.column. And we've done IDs before. This is going to be a db.integer. You know, integers are numbers. And this is going to be a primary underscore key. So we'll set that to true. So, okay. That looks good. Now, what else do we want? Well, each blog will have a title. So let's go db.column. And this will be db.string. And let's set the size of this to 255 characters. That's nice and big, probably too big, but ah, whatever. Next, we want the content. What's the actual blog post going to be? And you might call this body or content or eh, something like that. So I'll just call it content. And this is going to be also db.column. And inside of here, we want not db.string, but db.text. So text is like a you know big text area. We don't want a string of text. We want you know potentially paragraphs of text. So we'll use db.text. Okay. And we also want to designate the author. And oops, I spelled this db. There we go. And this will be db.column again. And we'll do the same thing. db.string. And we'll pass 255 for this. Now, eventually, we'll use users instead of authors. So we'll be able to sort of connect these blog posts to the actual logged in user. We're not there yet. For this video, we're just going to type in the, the author's name. And that'll be fine for now. Okay, so we also want to keep track of when each post was posted. So let's go date underscore posted. And this is also going to be a db.column. And here we want db dot date time. And we'll set the default to date time dot UTC now and we did this earlier with our last model, this will just automatically slap in the current date and time when the thing is posted. And finally, let's add a slug. So uh, slug, this will be db dot column. And again, here we want db dot string and let's pass in again 255 characters. And a slug is sort of like, let's head back over here, we're at add posts. So let's say we have a page called posts. And then the third blog post would be posts slash three. Well, that's not a great URL, we might want this instead to have a slug, a slug might be a third underscore post or, uh, you know, I don't know, I like cheese, whatever, that's a slug 
And so we'll be able to designate that when we create a blog post. So, okay, let's head back over here. And that looks good unless we've got some typos. I think we're good to go. Okay, so we've got our post model. Now we wanna add this to the database and we need to make a new migration and push that migration. We talked about migration several videos ago. Go back and check that out if you didn't see it. So in this video, I'm just gonna fly right through this really quickly. Let's head back over to our terminal and control C to break out of here. You'll notice I'm in my C slash Flasker directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And like I said, to make a migration is always a two-step process. First, we wanna go Flask db migrate dash m and let's give this a little message let's go add posts model and then, okay so we've made our migration now we need to push that migration into the database and we do that with flask db upgrade okay so i'm going to go flask run to run our server again and we can head back over to our sublime text editor here and look at migrations and versions and you see we have this new migration and uh, that's not it. <laughs> Let's see, there we go. New one right here with ID, title, content, author, date posted and slug. So, okay, looks good. Okay, so we've got our posts. Now let's go ahead and create a posts form because we wanna be able to type in something on the website in a form to add a post to the database. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is gonna be class, and let's call this post form, and this inherits flask form. And we've done this earlier, so I'll just sort of fly through this. And so we want a title, we want content, we want author, we want slug, and we want a submit button. So we don't need the date posted, we don't need the ID, those things will be created automatically, so we don't have to type those into the form. These are the things we need for the form. So this is just gonna be a string field and then some stuff. And let me just kind of copy this because it's gonna be the same for all of these, except this one will be a submit field. And we'll just pass in submit for that one. For these guys, for the title, we want this to say title. We want this one to say content. We want this one to say author. And we want this one to say slug field or something or slug, whatever. Now we probably also want some validators in here. So we want every post to have a title. We want every post to have a content. We want every post to have author and slug. So we need to put, use our validators. So let's go validators equals, and this is gonna be data required. Like we did it earlier. Okay, so that's good that, paste that, and paste that. Now, this content, we want this to be in a big text box, right? So if we look back at the website, you know, these are just simple fields here. We want this big, huge text box for our content. How do we do that? Well, we need to add a widget here. So widget equals, and this is gonna be a text area widget. Now we don't have text area widgets, we have to import that. So let's come back up here to the top, and let's go, from WTF forms dot widgets, we wanna import text area. And be sure the T and the A in text area are capitalized. So, okay, go ahead and save that. That's looking pretty good. I think that's all we need there. So now let's come down here and add a post page. Okay, so let's go app dot route. And we want this to point to add dash post. And this is going to be a form. So we have to put our methods in there. So remember how to do this. We want to get and we also want to post. Now a new version of flask just came out where this can be done a little bit differently. We're not going to talk about it in this video. But if you're interested, you might want to look into that. It's not much easier than doing it this way. So we can continue to do it this way. And that's fine. So let's define a function. Let's call this add underscore post. And here we want the form to equal post form. That's that form we just created, right? And now let's go if form dot validate underscore on underscore submit function. So let's go post equal posts. And this is called posts because that's our model name posts. So we got our posts here. Now we need to sort of say what we want to add to our model. So we want title to equal form dot title dot data. And then the next thing is content. 
and that's going to equal form.content.data. And then we've got our author, and that's going to equal form.author.data. And then finally, that slug thing, and that's going to equal form.slug.data. So when we submit the form, right, it'll have these things, form.title. We misspelled title. Boom, there they go. Almost missed that. <laughs> so we'll have title, we'll have content, we'll have author, and we'll have slug. So we're passing that into this uh, variable right here, and then just doing it by form.title.data data, form.author.data, form.content.data, et cetera. So, okay, we've got this variable. Now, after we click the button and submit the form, we're gonna redirect back to that page and we wanna clear the form from the stuff we just typed in. So we need to go form.title.data equals nothing. And then form.content.data, set that equal to nothing. Then form.author.data, spelled author, man, I cannot talk today. Uh, that's gonna equal nothing. And then finally form.slug.data, set that equal to nothing. So let's just say uh, clear the form right there. Okay, so now we've got all this stuff, now we need to add it to the database. So let's uh, add post data to database. So to do that, we just go db.session, dot add, and we want to pass in that post variable. Boom, right there. And then we also want to go db.session.commit, and that's good enough there. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so now let's go flash, add a little flash message that says, hey, it was submitted successfully. So we could say uh, post, or we could say, we could say blog post submitted successfully. Boom, exclamation point. Okay, so let's return a message. And finally, we want to redirect to the web page self, but we need to do this outside of the if statement. So here, we're just gonna return render underscore template. And we wanna point this to add underscore post.html, which we haven't created yet. We'll do that in just a second. And then we also wanna pass in the form. So form equals form. So this form is this form, which is this information, which then gets cleared, etc. So, okay, that should do. Let's go ahead and save this. Now we need to create this page. So let's come over here to our templates and let's go add a new file and let's go file, save as. We wanna save this as add underscore post .html, and let's go to, no, let's see, maybe our add user, and let's sort of copy this stuff. We want all of that. So we wanna extend our base, we wanna have block content, we gotta add our little message block, right? Remember that message, blog post was submitted successfully, that will be flashed up on the screen right there. And let's go down here, we also wanna end our block, so let me copy that. Okay, so go ahead and save that. Now we're also going to need, let's see, all of this stuff. So let me just comment this, or so let me just copy this stuff, bring that over here. And up here, instead of it saying user list, let's say uh, add blog post, dot, dot, dot. And we've got our form.hidden tag, that's the CSRF token thing we're posting. And, but instead of form.name, this is gonna be form.title label, and this will be form.title. This one will be what, author, let's say, A-U-T-H-O-R. This one will be slug. So let's go slug. And password hash, this will be content, and this will be content. And we don't need this one. Okay, so one more thing for this content label, you can see we're passing a form control class. We also wanna pass in rows, and I'm gonna set this equal to five. This is how many rows, you know, how big the text box is gonna be. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. All right, so finally, let's go over to our nav bar and let's add a link to this guy. Come down here, um, this one will do. We'll just go ahead and copy it. And instead of add user, let's go add blog post. 
instead of add underscore user, this is gonna be add underscore post. Okay, so go ahead and save this. We did a lot of stuff very quickly. I almost certainly messed something up. So yeah, text area is not defined. Ah, misspelled WTF forms. So WTF, not WTFF. Go ahead and save this, head back over here, reload. Okay, so now we can add blog post. And when we do, we get this title, author, slug, and content. And you notice this nice little box here, if we wanna make this bigger, we just come back over here to our add posts, come down here to rows, we can say, hey, change it to 10, come back over here, it reload, boom, now it's 10 rows, right? So that's how that works. And uh, so far, so good. So let's go ahead and say, this is my first blog post. Author, John Elder, slug, first post. Hello, this is my very first blog post. So we can click submit, blog post submitted successfully. We've got this thing is now empty and uh, looking good. So I don't know if that actually worked or not because we haven't created the page for the blog posts, but this video is getting a little bit long. We're gonna have to save that till next time. So we'll look at that next time. Uh, we've already done stuff like that with users. So, so hopefully you can figure it out on your own. Uh, we've added users down here at the bottom, same exact process, but we'll go through it and uh, make it look nice and all that good stuff in the next video. But so far, this looks pretty good. It looks like it's working and uh, eh, pretty fun. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com and I'll see you in the next video.